Disclaimer! The method I show in this video has a small problem when you use it on items. Some parts of the texture will be invisible when you hold it or put it in an item frame. The texture still looks normal in every other place, like menus or dropped on the ground. Entities and blocks that use TGA textures are also unaffected by this problem. If that's a deal breaker for you, I apologize, but let's get on with the video. Hey guys, this is Agent Mindstorm, and welcome back to my Bedrock Edition resource pack tutorial. In this video, we're going to learn how to deal with textures that have a .tga file type. You'll need paint.net installed to do this, so watch the editing textures tutorial linked in the playlist in the description first. If you already have paint.net installed, you're ready to go. Before we mess with the textures though, what exactly is a TGA texture? TGA stands for targa, which stands for something that doesn't matter. A targa file is pretty much the same as a PNG file, which is what we use for the other textures. In fact, when you open it in paint.net, it'll look exactly the same as a PNG file. So why does Minecraft use targa files then? Well, targa files are used whenever a texture has an effect applied to part of it, but not all of it. For example, sheep's wool color changes depending on what color they're dyed, but the rest of the sheep stays the same. Changes we make to the targa texture affects what part of the sheep gets dyed. With this in mind, let's open the file for the sheep in paint.net. We'll open our default resources, navigate through textures, then entity, then sheep, and find sheep.tga. Let's open that in paint.net, and... Where is the rest of the sheep? If you use the eyedropper to select a pixel where part of the sheep texture should be, you'll get a color that matches the part of the sheep that should be there. Notice that the opacity value is set very low, which is why it seems like it, there's no texture there. What's actually happening is that the parts of the sheep that don't get dyed are set to a very low opacity, and the parts that do get dyed are set to a very high opacity. This is how Minecraft decides which parts of a target texture will or won't be changed before they appear in game. Generally, the parts that will be changed are set to maximum opacity, and the parts that get ignored will be set to minimum opacity. This probably leaves you thinking, that's alright, but I want to change the sheep texture and I can't see half of it thanks to these target textures. Well, let's fix that. To find the rest of the sheep, we're going to download a plugin for paint.net that lets us remove transparency. Go to this page, link in the description, which has a plugin pack for paint.net on it. Download it with the big download button and unzip the file in your downloads folder. At this point, you should save anything you have open in paint.net and close it. Now we can safely run the unzipped exe file, don't worry about the warning, just click allow, and then you'll be brought to this menu with a bunch of checkboxes. Click none in the top right corner of the screen to uncheck the rest of the plugins, then check transparency.dll. Agree to the terms and conditions at the bottom of the menu, and press OK. We just successfully installed a plugin to help us remove semi-transparent pixels. Now we can reopen the sheep.tga texture in paint.net. This time, though, we have a plugin to help reveal the rest of the sheep to us. Select the whole image, then select the Adjustments tab at the top of the screen. At the bottom of this list is the Transparency plugin. Choose it, then drag the slider all the way to the right, and you should see the rest of the sheep appear out of thin air. Press OK, and you have the full sheep texture available to you. I'd recommend that you save this texture as sheep.png right next to the sheep.tga file in the default resources so you have both easily accessible. Being able to see target textures is fine, but you really need to know how to create them. Let's keep using the sheep as an example. My goal now is to create a sheep that, when you dye it, its skin is dyed, but its wool stays the same color. It's the exact inverse of how a sheep normally works. The first thing we're going to do is separate the part that we want to change color and the part that we want to stay the same into two different layers. The magic wand is very helpful for this. We can select a pixel of the sheep's skin, set the flood mode to global, and adjust the tolerance until only the sheep's skin is selected. Next, we cut it, then create a new layer and paste it there. The image should look the same now as it did before the cutting, but we can disable the skin and wool parts separately. Let's finish moving the sheep's skin to the new layer before we start the next step. If we toggle the layers now, we can see that all the wool is on one layer and all the skin is on another. Since we only want the skin to be dyed in-game, we're going to select the wool layer's properties and set the opacity to 1. The wool seemingly disappears, but we know it's still there. All that's left to do now is save our file as a target image and put it in the correct place in our resource pack. Press Ctrl Shift S to save the image as a new file and go into your resource pack folder. We made a sheep texture, so we're going to open textures, create a new folder called entity, 
and create another new folder inside it called sheep. Next, we name the file sheep.tga and change the file type to tga. We press save, then OK to this screen, then flatten on this screen, and BAM! You've got a changed, made sheep.tga texture. Let's test the resource pack now. We'll enable the pack in the global resources screen, then load up a world. Oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. What is this? What have I done? <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess it worked. Yes, guys, that is the end of this video. I hope it helped you learn how target textures should be used in resource packs, but for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.